Hi everyone, this is the Penny Pinching Prepper and welcome to today's episode. And before we get into that, um, I just want to welcome you all to this channel. If you're new to this channel, I hope that you enjoy it and you learn something from it. And for those of you uh, coming back, thank you so much. It's greatly appreciated. I, I can't do this channel without you. Um, or... At least I won't because if nobody's watching I uh, definitely don't want to do it <clears throat> but uh, without saying any more let's go ahead and go on today's topic and I want to talk about prepping in tunnel vision um, I'm starting to notice a lot of tunnel vision in the prepping community uh, and I guess the best way I'm is to, to let you guys know what I'm trying to say is just to go into, you know, descriptions, um, give you examples. Uh, so when I think of tunnel vision, when it comes to prepping, um, to me, I would say 98% of the time, tunnel vision is by far the worst thing you can bring to the table as a, as a prepper. Uh, we have different things we're good at we have you know different things we excel at um, we enjoy doing um, and we tend to focus on those things and we tend to get a mindset of it's this way it's this way it's this way no matter what um, and to give you better examples, um, so let's talk about the alpha male testosterone, I'm horrible at that word, driven um, type mentality, all right? The, the person who thinks that they're going to solve everything with a gun, they're going to kick everybody's butt that using brute force 90% of the time, you know, is the best and the only way to assess a, a situation, um, you know, like, you know, somebody who thinks that they have something to prove or feels that they have something to prove or, you know, it's just that, that idea that, like, uh, for an in another instance, um, people that have this idea that I have my property, I, um, I have my preps, I'm not going to share with anybody, you know, trespassers will be shot on site, um, <clears throat> I can survive the next 15 years, uh, with just, you know, me and my wife and my three kids and our preps and no matter who comes along we're going to be able to defend it no matter what because you know we've thought of every aspect well guess what you haven't um at the end of the day you can think a million ways to to sun up and you're still not going to come up with every scenario that could possibly happen. And even if you did, who's to say that your scenario did not count for the numbers that they bring or someone that's smarter than you? Because believe me, there's somebody smarter than you. I know there's somebody smarter than me. In fact, there's a lot of people smarter than me. But to get that tunnel vision that you're... Um, only preparing for one type of a, a situation, whether it be, um, you know, a killer earthquake or super volcano or, you know, some sort of uh, full collapse of society. Um, and you're only prepping for one type of thing then you've missed the whole concept of prepping to begin with because prepping is to be prepared and not just prepared for one thing. You can't just say, oh, I've got a stockpile of food. I'm good. Well, what about 
about firearms, ammunition, heat sources, water purification, um, you know, food alone is not going to cut it. Uh, it's this idea of, you know, no matter how you look at it, you need to be better prepared to be um, able to change, all right? And it, it really surprises me how many uh, people and, and preppers that I listen to that are out there that have this mentality of, oh, um, I believe in the old Marines logo or uh, motto, um, assess, adapt, and overcome but yet they only have one plan of attack. They only have one idea of how they're going to handle the situation or they do it because they think that they, you know, have it all figured out and therefore they narrow it down to this choke point of knowledge and supplies when that choke point um would is just that it's eventually gonna you know cut you off and kill you because you weren't thinking on a broader level um another thing um not trying to call anybody out so i'm not going to use names um but i did get into a, a very fast discussion last night with somebody um and I brought the idea of um, psychology and how it's very oftenly overlooked as a very important asset of prepping. Um, and the, the first thing out of the person's mouth was basically, you know, we ain't got no time for foofy psychology soft little boy type things. I, I, I don't know that I'm quoting exact, but it was along that lines. And that once again is having that tunnel vision. Um, I'm going to give an example uh, through grifting. Um, those of you who don't know what grifting is, it's a word that I prefer to use over what it really is, which is a con artist. <laughs> I just, I mean, it's ugly either which way, but con artist just sounds so much uglier. Um, if you can grift your way, you know, if you can learn tools of grifting, um, you can avoid confrontation, physicalness, uh, red alert, red flagging, you know, all these types of things um, by just using simple psychology tools. Um, you know, like for an example, uh, you can use psychology to make somebody think that they want to do something for you or give something to you when in reality you've just tricked them into doing something for you or giving something to you um, of free will and more importantly them thinking it's their idea. Uh, that's a very strong asset if you can do that. If you can um, walk into a situation where you bump into a stranger or you've noticed them around your camp uh, a little bit to be able to approach a situation um, and be able to give the opposite person great ease that they feel comfortable, they let their guard down, they're laid back, they're not itchy on edge, you know, ready to pull their gun out because, you know, they don't know if you're friend or foe. Um, even if you are foe, being able to give them the sense of security that you are a friend gives you great advantage. Um, 
or if you are friendly, uh, it you can use psychology to control the situation where they don't necessarily want to take advantage of you because you're friendly, but you don't necessarily escalate something into something bigger than you would expect it to be or would want it to be to where now you're you know, wondering, is it going to be him or me? <clears throat> and uh, those of you who think that it's going to be you, you never know. It's a shake of the dice. That person might be a quicker draw than you. You know, they might buy a better shot under pressure than you. Even if you've trained your whole life, doesn't mean that they haven't trained harder. And you don't know that. So you need to be able to come into the situation with an open mind. I mean, honestly, in this world, and when it comes to prepping, about the only thing that's black and white is God, all right? It's cut and dry when it comes to God, but everything else is gray and fluid, and you need to approach all of those things as such. Um, I'm not saying this to point fingers and say I know I'm better than all of you guys or anything like that. It's just something that I've noticed and, and maybe it's due to the fact that we are under stress and we are under pressure right now. We all know why and we all understand why, but um, maybe there's a lot of us who have, haven't been here before and we don't know how to... Uh, actually handle the pressures and stresses when they start to arise. Um, so, guys, I, I just really want to try to get you to look at prepping from a whole different perspective, not try to have the, the mentality that that this is the way it's going to be no matter what, that I've got it figured out, that I've taken every precaution, that, you know, because honestly, you could have begun prepping when you were in diapers and be 80 years old, and there's so many scenarios that can happen in an SHTF situation that um, you will never have a chance to experience them all, um, let alone think of them all. Um, it, it, it's just not happening. So I really am just trying to help people try to think of things from a broader perspective. And the great thing about <clears throat> back to the beginning of this conversation, when I was talking about the, the, the gentleman that made that comment, um, by the end of the conversation, I started noticing that the whole conversation had gone to a different direction and I started noticing that more and more people were starting to think out of the box and be like, well, what about this scenario? What about that scenario? Can you handle this scenario the same way you would that scenario? And I, I could see the, the wheels turning and, you know, it, it was good to see that um, you know, maybe with a little bit of direction and, and guidance and help, or maybe just a reminder that we can't just expect to do everything one way. Um, we can't expect to die on our hill. We can't expect to bug out. We can't expect to... Uh, bug in, we can't expect to, you know, whatever. We, we need to be as prepared as we possibly can mentally, emotionally, physically, and uh, with tools and such and all that, that stuff that is necessary to be able to 
assess, um, adapt, assess, and overcome, right? Um, or assess, adapt, and overcome, sorry. Uh, you guys all knew what I meant. Um, when it really happens. And it's important that we start to apply that to our everyday life, the assess, adapt, and overcome, instead of thinking, uh, instead of getting stuck in that mentality that, oh, I know that that's important, I'm going to put that in the back, and then if, you know, SHTF ever happens, I'll pull that back out, and I'll know that I have to, you know, um, assess, adapt, and overcome. No, start practicing now, um, you know, for those of you who haven't thought about doing it or figured, just like I said, you know, oh, I can do it when the time comes. Start using it now. It is a prep. It is a tool. It is a, um, uh, a uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? A skill. There we go. That's what I'm looking for, a skill. And as we all know, a skill is something that first has to be learned, then has to be practiced before we can think about applying and using it. So, uh, just really think about that whole mentality of assess, adapt, and overcome, and what all goes into it, whether it's, like I said, mental, emotional, physical, so on and so on it could be any one of those roles that you come into and honestly using your mind your brain and psychology <clears throat> uh, are all very important skills and things to bring to the table if not one of the most important because if you can use your mind to assess, adapt, and overcome, um, especially do it without having to create conflict, chaos, um, or maybe uh, energy, strength, resources by utilizing somebody else's because they have so much more than you do and they know you know they do being able to use your mind to get what you want versus being a raider yourself or a ransacker yourself which is something you hope never happens to you or your family but let's be honest especially if you have a family when things get desperate and things get needy, let's let's say, you know, you have the plan of, I'm not going to stockpile a lot of food, I'm going to, um, you know, rely more on my hunting skills, and it just so happens that, you know, you're in an area where there's a lot of people, like, let's say, the East Coast, and it's six, seven, eight, nine months into the, you know, grid down total anarchy situation and the food has started to get hunted out and it's getting harder and harder to find food because there's less and less animals because so many people have started hunting also <clears throat> um you know what are you going to do then you know what if all your stockpiles have run out, hunting is not that feasible in your area anymore because of overhunting, and there's a group up the way that's bigger than you, left you alone, and you think there's a possibility that you could take them, you know, by, you know, planning and strategic, you know, moves and whatnot and whatever. But what if you could avoid all of it by using your mentality to manipulate the situation to get what you need? Especially if it's a group that doesn't have uh, 
a heart, let's say, somebody who's got this mentality of, oh, it's my stockpiles, it's my supplies, I'm not going to share. Obviously, someone who doesn't know Christ. Um, but, uh, nonetheless, not judging. I was not saying that to judge. I just realized that that came off sounding judgy. But as Christians, we should know better than to, uh, even in a grid down, shit hit the situation type thing, uh, that we should always have kindness and compassion in our heart, just as Christ did. And uh, be willing to find some way to help the person in need. Um, but if you run across somebody like that, then, you know, a group like that, brute strength might not work. Firepower might not work. It might come down to manipulation or being laughed away or dying. So... I think I've rambled on long enough about this, guys. Uh, I just wanted to bring something to the table for you all to think about. Because um, like I said, I have noticed a lot of tunnel vision going on in the prepping lately. And I don't know for what reason, but it seems to be picking up of this way, this way, this way. It has to be this way. This is the only way it's going to work. And nine times out of ten, when they're talking about it, it has nothing to do with using your smarts. And if you can think your way out of a situation, whew, think about the resources you just saved. Whether it be energy, whether it be calories, whether it be supplies, you know... Sky's the limit when you're using your mind as to what you can accomplish and how you're going to accomplish it. Um, now, I'm not saying that other things than using your mind by any means, everything is important when it comes to prepping. You know, having some sort of fitness uh, to the best of your capability under your circumstances is important. Having preps for bugging in and bugging out are important. Having skills are important, whether it be bushcraft skills, whether it be survival skills, whether it be medical skills. Um, all of these things are important. And that comes back around to the whole tunnel vision, which is the true topic of this whole chit chat tonight. Don't find yourself getting caught in tunnel vision. Um, and don't ever underestimate your opponent. Because, well, forgive me, my wife would kick my butt. Um, but uh, don't ever underestimate your opponent, guys. Uh, you never know what they're capable of. Uh, underestimating anything is deadly. If you can't come into it with the situation saying, I don't know, but I'm going to figure out, then you've already set yourself up for fail. So, on that note, guys, uh, I think I've rambled on long enough. Um, if I offended anybody tonight, I'm sorry. I uh, didn't mean to. Um, because at the end of the day, for some of these situations that I've talked about, I'm sure if the person's watching, they're going to pick up on it. And it's not because I don't think you're a good person or I didn't think that you didn't have valid things that night. I just felt that you had tunnel vision. And tunnel vision is deadly. So on that note, I hope to have more conversation with, with all the people that, that brought me to this conclusion. Um, I hope to learn from other people and hope people have learned from me. And 
my ultimate goal, um, especially from here on out with my channel, um, is still going to be the DIY thing. I'm taking a small break on that. Uh, I'm behind on my winter uh, stuff. I'm behind on a couple of major projects that I can't really videotape in a manner in which I can use it for YouTube. That's why it's mostly been shorts and stuff. Um, but I wanted to connect with you guys real quick, let you know that I still am going to be coming around. Um, I'm still going to be doing the same thing, but I'm really going to be adding, uh, connecting with different types of uh, prepping groups, different types of prepping people and getting to really grow um, my prepping community with others. Because um, I really don't have one. Uh, at this point, I'm technically a lone wolf, not by choice, but by circumstance and cir er, cir situations. Um, but, uh, blip, 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 blip. Um, but, so... Uh, I'm going to be focusing a lot more on that as well. Um, so with all of that, guys, remember God's good and God bless and uh, keep prepping and stay fluid. Good night, all.